United States Navy's famous Task Force 58 heads for action. Barely a month after Iwo Jima, British and American carriers and capital ships close in on the Ryukyu Islands, stepping stones to Japan and the China coast. Carrier planes go aloft to begin the nine-day bombardment preceding the invasion of Okinawa. Large strategic island in the Ryukyu chain, 325 miles from the Japanese mainland. Inside the range of enemy land-based aircraft, the fleet is covered by a constant air umbrella while fighters demolish Japanese ships. Now, enemy planes attack. Guns fire on solitary survivors of group attempts to penetrate United States air cover. 90% are shot down. From Okinawa and newly captured Iwo, two great avenues of assault. Okinawa is an ideal base for attack against Japan, enemy-held China, or Formosa. Air attacks leading to landings at Okinawa are unrelenting. Throughout the entire 800-mile island chain, bombers and fighters attack in constant waves. Okinawa's major airfields are shot up. Caliber guns chew up Japanese planes. High explosive rockets smash heavier targets. Between strikes, under cover of rough weather, the fleet moves toward the amphibious invasion of Okinawa, an operation that cuts in half the distance between American forces and Japan. Okinawa's airstrips and natural harbors, its central strategic position, are now well within our grasp. Slung under this plane is a new American weapon, the firebomb. Filled with a highly inflammable jellied gasoline, Incendiaries of this type have already been used against Japanese installations. The bomb hurtles down to scatter over a wide area and burn at 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Actual combat with the United States Marines on Peleliu Island, the fire bombs were used against Japanese cave positions on a vital ridge. Fire bombs dropped from fleets of American planes are proving one of the war's effective agents of military destruction.
Houston, Texas, the first of 50 American-built cargo ships is turned over to France. Representatives of the French and United States Navy and Merchant Marine officiate. With French crews under French command, the ships will operate within the inter-allied supply pool. The American flag comes down. The French tricolor goes up. First of many, this ship joins the mighty Allied shipping fleet. At Newport News, Virginia, the largest warship in the world, the new Navy aircraft carrier USS Midway. Naval aviator hero Lieutenant George Gay watches the Midway's sponsor christen the mighty carrier. The Midway, named after the first great Pacific victory of this war, can base a fleet of 80 planes on its deck. It is a significant addition to the Navy. The city of Zweibrücken in the Saar is pounded by United States 7th Army weapons, including rocket-firing tanks. of the 3rd Division penetrate the ruins of Zweibrücken. Army vehicles roll through, headed for new victories on the road to Berlin. Major General John O'Daniel, 3rd Division commander, arrives with his advance units. The industrial city of Saarbrücken, largest in the Saar Basin, is taken by men of the 7th Division of the 7th Army. Lashing out through the Siegfried Line, the 7th Army struck north for a juncture with the 3rd Army and the complete destruction of German forces in the Saar. In this building in 1935, the result of the Saar plebiscite, bringing the Saar under German control, was announced by Adolf Hitler. Army pontoon bridges near Remagen, scene of the dramatic first crossing of the Rhine, carry increasing loads of troops, trucks, and tanks. From their bridgehead east of the mighty river, Allied armies have now slashed into the heart of Germany. Ten miles north, the 9th Division of the 1st Army enters Bad Godesburg, decked in white flags of surrender. Here, Hitler and Chamberlain met in 1938, preceding the Munich Pact. Now, German civilians take orders from the Allied military government. All weapons must be turned in. At Bonn, on the Rhine, just north of Gothenburg, the 1st Army's 1st Division drives to the wreckage of the bridge. Now they have advanced far beyond. Bonn becomes just one more objective taken, just one more collecting point for thousands of beaten soldiers of the Reich, now prisoners of the Allies. 